appointment as president and CEO of the Natural Resource Governance Institute came with an express mandate for change. To inform the NRGI we hope to be, I embarked on a listening tour, speaking with over 200 people from a range of industries, countries, and backgrounds in the past six months. I'm excited to share what I heard and how it will inform our work ahead. I believe that we are facing three distinct but overlapping moments of inflection, each of which impacts and intersects with the mission of NRGI. These points of inflection exist for the natural resource governance field where we are pushing beyond the initial focus on transparency, using data for accountability and analyzing and addressing the implementation gap to the next frontier of our work. For the transparency participation and accountability field, we are confronting together the limitations of these approaches in unseating injustice and inequity. And for global organizations working in the development field, we are seeking to accelerate efforts to decolonize development. Naturally, of course, these evolutions have been underway for some time, but our relevance and impact depend on our ability to understand and ultimately integrate these shifts into our work. The question we are grappling with now is, what do these different moments of inflection mean for NRGI? I believe that we need to both return to our roots and also to generate new growth. From its founding, NRGI has understood that oil, gas, and minerals present huge risks to the achievement of economic outcomes, slowing growth and development, and to governance outcomes, disrupting the social contract between governments and citizens, and increasing risks of corruption and capture. But I believe we focused too much on the tools of and procedural governance in our response. While equitable, inclusive growth and prosperity was always an implicit aim, we need to bring it back to the forefront, to return to our roots by emphasizing the inclusion of all voices and the more equitable distribution of resources globally and locally. We also need to integrate newer growth, the impact of the climate crisis, which has for too long run parallel to, not integrated with, resource governance. We must focus on enabling resource-rich developing countries to make economic and environmental adaptations needed for sustainability in a low carbon future. This work is already underway by NRGI and our partners, but more concerted investments and pivots now are needed. What we will seek then to be is a fulcrum of change for the billion people who live in resource-rich developing countries to leverage trillions of dollars in oil, gas, and mining sectors. We recognize that systemic injustice and inequity arise from natural resources, but they are also the lifeblood of many economic systems. Our vision is a world where resource-rich developing countries are more sustainable, more resilient, and more just. To get there, we must first understand and then seek to leverage our strengths. Sector-specific technical knowledge and sophistication, rigorous, reliable research and analysis, cross-regional experience and presence, and credibility with and access to key actors. But we also must be humble about and seek to address areas where we fall short, to tell NRGI story better, who we are, what we stand for, and why our work should matter to more than just a small niche universe, to define our North Stars as our work has gotten more holistic, more sophisticated, more context-specific. It has also become less clear what changes we are prioritizing and why. And how we work, we must consider how we best put our power in the service of change makers and leverage and amplify their power effectively. And lastly, we must be more ambitious, more bold, and experiment in our work. So, what does that mean for NRGI as we look ahead? First and foremost, it means that we must go further and faster on the energy transition. The consistent message from our partners was we know it's coming, but we have questions about how far, how fast, and just plain how we as resource-rich developing countries will manage. And we invite and need NRGI's analysis, credibility, and convening to do it. The shift that I propose is that energy transition becomes more than just one pillar of our strategy, but an animating force. But there are questions about how we deploy our expertise. In how we work, we need to ensure that our analysis translates into action, that we move from the passive provision of information and the fiction of facts, a presumption that facts will shift incentives and behavior. We need to be more intentional about what we're seeking with our analysis, more targeted in how we reach our audiences, and more on top of and responsive to current events at the country and global level. In terms of where we work, we need to deepen and shift our presence in countries to be more responsive and opportunistic and impactful, aligned with our North Stars as well. 
we also need to be better able to exploit our international credibility and influence to harness the power of corporates and to influence major global players by being more precise and more targeted. And in terms of who we work with, we need to use our credibility and positioning to more expressly work on equity and inclusion to bring in voices to the global and national debates. On the one hand, that means elevating and amplifying resource-rich developing countries on the global stage. On the other, it means that we need to be more intentional about ensuring that our national work is informed by citizen voice and perspective. Mindful I've thrown a lot out there, let me highlight a few takeaways. There is persistent demand for energized knowledge, networks, and experience. However, shifts in the world and the fields in which we occupy require us to change to meet that demand and to achieve our mission. The first element of change is to return to the roots of our work, to reinvigorate our commitment to dismantling systemic injustice and inequality, and ensuring that new opportunities such as the energy transition do not exacerbate or introduce new injustice and inequities. This requires strategic choices that focus on shifting power, emphasizing inclusion, and amplifying voices internally as well as externally. The second is to embrace new growth, accelerating our work on the energy transition and bringing our analysis, convening power, capacity development and advocacy efforts to bear on this timely challenge. It is the opportunity to occupy a distinct niche bridging global and country discussions, bringing political acumen and economic know-how, concrete policy options and strategies for reform. In addition to these pivots, we must concertedly define our North Stars, our voice and our position. We must engage with greater agility and rigorous experimentation. And across all this work, we must continue to work in partnership, recognizing that the magnitude of the challenges ahead require our collective efforts. If we do so, we can ensure that Energy Eye and the resource governance field achieve that mission to improve quality of life for people in resource rich countries. I look forward to your feedback and also to the chance to work together to define the path ahead. Thank you.